Welcome back to First Bounce. Jamie McMillan from North Melbourne joins us. Jamie, thanks for being here. Good to see you. And Duck, just a little bit of a cameo on the ad break there. It actually took me three hours to make that. They, <laughs> they said I was overacting. <laughs> couldn't get your look? No, no. couldn't get it right. <laughs> hey, Jamie, thanks for being here. Uh, lots to be excited about at North Melbourne. Everyone, I guess, or particularly North Melbourne fans, want to see you guys take the next step this year. You've been in the news all summer about the leadership group. Uh, was it going to be um, Andrew? Was it going to be Jack? And then the day of the announcement, all the media were invited down. And it was like waiting for the result of the new Prime Minister. You all went into a locked room and it was meant to be five, a five-minute meeting with Scotty and 45 minutes later you emerged and it's status quo. What were you talking about for all that time? Uh, I wish I could say it was something interesting, but it was actually um, Scotty pulled up about three or four clips from the uh, training the day before, and we went through those clips. And um, a couple of boys weren't really, weren't really understanding what was going on, so a couple of questions were asked. And then I think Dale thought he'd uh, you know just ask a few more questions to keep the media waiting. So yeah, no, unfortunately it wasn't anything special. And then at, literally at the end, for about it would have gone for three minutes, I reckon the, the announcement. Scotty said, "This is our leadership group," and um, and Andrew Sly is going to be captain. No surprise, really, as far as the players are concerned, despite all the talk in the media? No, nah, no surprise, really. I think it all sort of came about last year. Uh, someone actually asked Andrew Sly, are you going to be captain next year? And he said, oh, um, you know, we'll just decide over the, over the next sort of three or four months. And it just sort of went from there. But we went through the process we've gone through every year. And this year, it was probably a little bit a longer process. And, um, yeah, it wasn't any surprise to us. Jay Mac, Matty just mentioned the fact North Melbourne want to take that next step and uh, obviously two preliminary finals in a row now. In a position to win last year against West Coast, and I hate to bring up such a painful memory, but what were the lessons from that game that you now take into this season? So put in the same situation, you can hopefully go that one week further. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I thought a fair bit about that game from last year, but um, going into half time, I think we had control of the game at certain stages for the first half and we were able to stop. You know, they were a good good team all year, but um, especially in the third quarter, they, they just ran all over us and we weren't able to stem the flow and they were able to get some pretty quick goals there. So the ability to sort of stem the flow a little bit and when goals get when, when teams get a run on, kick a few goals, the ability just to stand up and get the game back on our terms a little bit quicker. I reckon um, the f- last few years there have been times where, yeah, they've sort of kicked four or five goals and then we thought, all right, now we need to, we need to change something. So that, that ability to, to put, the, put the wall up a bit quicker. Uh, we've clearly, I say we've, we've clearly got a group of older blokes that are probably in their last year and then you've got a new group coming through and I'll put Wellesley in that group because they say he's as fit as he's been for a long time since he won his BNF. Um, didn't, not playing tomorrow in Wangaratta. Why is, why is that? I, I was actually asking just before because I thought I might get asked this question. <laughs> yeah. um, so he, he'd planned to actually play two NAB games and he was going to play the first and I think the third. And then they decided we've got a week off the way it's, way it's drawn. So he wanted to play the two in a row. So if he misses this week, then he'll have the week. We've got the week off next week and then he'll back up with um, the last two NABs. I saw some pretty exciting footage from your intra-club game. Jed Anderson, the new recruit from the Hawks, just took the ball in the middle, just took everyone on and uh, put on a show. It's got to be exciting, somebody like that coming to the club as well, just to add that different element again. Daniel Wells comes back in, Jed Anderson comes in. A lot of speed and excitement. He, he certainly has speed. What, get, what uh, does get lost in that footage is it was Lead Boots Ferrito chasing him, so it made him, <laughs> it made him look a little quicker. But, look, I've played on Jed a little bit this preseason. He's certainly got, got a turn of speed, and um, he'll add a touch of class up forward. And, as you said, Wells, he's almost a new recruit for us as well. So we just want them both to come in and, and um, do what they do. Brad's talked about a fast start. Uh, first NAB Cup game, you want to have a good NAB Cup and then hit the season hard because, uh, if anything, you haven't started the years well over the last couple, even though you've played preliminary finals. It's just so important you get in front of the ledger coming into the second half. Obviously, finished off well last year, but the start's just so important. Yeah, we've, um, I've been at the club now for this is my seventh year and we've been behind the eight ball, sort of going the mid-season break every year. So. Yep. Um, last year was no different. So this year, you know, we've tinkered a little bit. We've played a couple of pracky games before the NAB Cup. We've played two now, which um, we haven't done in the past. So hopefully we've just been trying to get into that game simulation a little earlier to, to get to get us going a bit. And hopefully we can have a really good NAB Challenge series and 
and leading the round one against Adelaide, and hopefully it's not a repeat of last year. Were you surprised by the news yesterday? Nathan Grimer, former teammate, signing up with the Bombers. It was a bit of a I shock. Was, I was a little bit, because he signed, what was yesterday? Yesterday was Thursday, and I saw him in that uh, club Wednesday afternoon. So <laughs> so he wasn't joking when he said he was in at the club two days ago? No, no, he's, he's been in there. So he's, um, he's employed by North Melbourne, so he's been tapping away at his computer upstairs. <laughs> I saw him the other day when I did that film. Filming. No, he's, um, he looks very odd in a suit upstairs, but he, he has been given a desk up there. So, no... You are a little bit surprised because, you know, from I saw firsthand what he went through last year, but I also know what kind of bloke he is and he's as competitive bloke as they come and if he feels his body's right to go, then I'm, I'm not really one bit surprised that, you know, when given the opportunity, he's jumped at it. We spoke about this last night. This time of year, you sit around, we all say, oh, you know, we, we can play finals footy. Is there a true belief at the Kangaroos that we can actually win a flag with this group? Do you, do you truly believe that? Yeah, I do. It's, um, it's something that I think has changed a little bit, that mindset. I think... When we made that first prelim, and especially because we were playing that catch-up footy through the back half of the year, everyone was sort of sitting back and sort of thinking, oh, that almost surprised us a little bit. And then to back it up with the year we had last year, and, and we have a really good understanding of what we did in that second half of the year to sort of turn it around. Now we've got that belief, well, the first one was no fluke. Mm. Um, so I think going into this year, we especially uh, or the sort of last two months when we've been training, I, I really feel amongst the group and the experienced guys have really led the way that we're training to, to play in a grand final this year and win one. Just before we let you go, tell us about World Beaters on nmfc.com.au. Is this your uh, little project? <laughs> With Sean yeah, Atley. It is one of the more um, disgusting... What, uh, what's going on here? <laughs> That's a world record attempt by myself. Um, How many pegs? I don't know if anyone's ever tried that, but that is... Um, in a minute, you have to get 52 pegs on your face. Did you now, beat the world record? I got to 28, and I thought I was flying. So <laughs> it is... His name's Silvio... Something or other, and I'm not sure how he did it. But I think you need a bit more loose skin on your face. Ooh, I actually <laughs> thought I had it. And that's one of my strengths, the, 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 the skin there. But um, just tried a few years after you've retired, and you've yeah, yeah. got a couple of kilos. That's yeah, maybe when I hit about 70, 75, it might uh, might go on a little easier. But yeah, it was something the club asked us to do, and. Um, at the time, I thought it would be a bit of fun, and it actually turned out a lot harder than I thought. <laughs> Jamie, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Good luck tomorrow, good luck for the season, and we'll talk soon. Cheers, guys. Jamie McMillan from North Melbourne, good enough to be with us in the studio here on...